Our job has to be to ensure that we put up the resources and empower people to be able to make the case so that whether it's society, the trade unions, employers, can actually change. Um, and Austin, I, I think you're, you're, you're a giant of the movement for the work that you're doing, and we're very proud of you in PCS, and I think that was a fabulous speech that, that, that you just made. I, mean, I also want to pay tribute, um, and, and I think she's speaking later, to Janine Booth, who, uh, who I can see sitting out in the front, uh, because Janine has been running some uh, education courses for us in, in our union, and they have been probably the best received courses that we've done in an awful long time. Uh, it's really, really inspiring work. They are courses that have been so well received, we're going out for a second, second run. Um, and again, what that tells me uh, is that when issues such as this are taken out to trade union activists, to people who care about everybody in the workplace, then there is a real sort of uh, hunger for people to learn, to be trained, to ensure that the unions can take the battle for fair and just workplaces on behalf of all of our members, and in this case our neurodiverse members, to the employer to ensure that we can get workplace justice. And so I, I start from, as I have at many fringes that I've done today, I'm going to make a link to when we did lunchtime about social security. Uh, because the, the reality is that this meeting, the meeting lunchtime, about what a shambles of a social security system we have, where people are penalised, they are sanctioned, they are thrown off benefits, where we have record levels of people committing suicide, is a sign of an inhumane society where politicians delivering political choices that they call austerity affect people's lives every single day in a way that is traumatic to see and in a way that Theresa May, Ian Duncan Smith and all the others, many of whom of course are millionaires, do not have a clue. And what links to me all of the meetings that we're doing is we're only here because whether we're in the trade unions or whether we're in the Labour Party because we believe in a fair and equal society a redistribution of wealth, but a fundamental principle that every single person has something to offer. We shouldn't be for stereotyping. We shouldn't be for people being siloed. We should say everyone has something to offer. And the society that we want is that the right support and the right resources in place so that everyone can make the type of contribution that we have just seen Austin make. And we're a million miles away from that type of society. In fact, we are moving backwards at a very rapid pace. So the one key thing we can all, I think, agree uh, is that whether it's social security, whether it's neurodiversity, whether it's equality, justice in the workplace, what we all need is Jeremy Corbyn to be Prime Minister, John to be Shadow, Pri uh, Shadow Chan to be the Chancellor, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and we need a radical Labour government that is going to put its money where its mouth is, and that's what's at stake, and that's the thing I think we can all agree that we want desperately. So in, in our union, people like me and others have got an awful lot to learn, which is why I come back to the important role that people at this meeting play and people like Austin have played. But just to show how that can work in a trade union movement, let me very quickly just say that our conference in 2016 carried a motion which was specifically about developing and supporting a network of diversity champions to promote self-advocacy, allowing the voices of neurodiverse members themselves to be heard in PCS. A really important step taken. Now that motion didn't come from me, it didn't come from a member of staff, it actually came from people who understood the issue and can see what is missing in the union. It is a classic case of in a democratic process where people feel empowered, they can put a motion to the conference, and then it changes the way that a big union actually operates. And as a result of carrying that motion, I've already mentioned that we have run two-day courses that Janine has been delivering, and we're now about to have a second stage uh, of those courses. We're clear that as a union, we have a specific role to play about making the arguments for a fairer, inclusive society, but day-to-day -day challenging those disgraceful policies of our employers. And I just want to make this point. We are employed by the government. Most of the people who are in PCS are state employees. They are civil servants. The civil service as an employer is one of the worst that people will find. In its rush to get rid of 180,000, let's pick that figure, 180,000 people have lost their jobs. They have introduced policies that affect not just neurodiverse, but people with all sorts of issues, because they, of course, go for those who can churn out their targets 
in a way that doesn't question everything, that assumes everybody can do their work in the same way. And the casualties are the people who have conditions, disabilities, in some cases, believe it or not, terminal illnesses have been sacked under capability policies that actually are in a book that says you will be tough with everybody and we don't really care about the way that that has to be done. And imagine what it's like working in a target-driven culture where if you don't produce the numbers, you know that suspicion will fall on you and you know the pressures that that must exert. And that's hard enough for somebody who doesn't have any conditions. People who have conditions... It is frankly terrifying. So we have to say, whether it's the civil service, the private sector, or anyone else, we want our employers to treat everybody in a proper way, put their resources and make the adjustments that are needed for everyone to show that they have got somewhere to op something to offer. And that's why I'm going to finish by saying that the carriage of the motion, the work that Janine and Austin have done, mean that we now, in our union's disability forum, have neurodiversity as a standing item on the agenda to ensure that it is always considered in terms of the work that we need now to be done, that we're getting better in publicising and making sure articles are out there for our members to uh, be able to read, and that we have added it to its act as a core in our education programme. And on the 17th and 18th of November, our National Disabled Seminar uh, will have Janine uh, as a speaker. And I know that her contribution, as ever, will be valued. So I'm really finishing with saying, we're the ones who have to learn. But our role is therefore not just to learn, but to ensure that having learned, things are done about the issues that need to be tackled. The unions have a lot to learn. I'm proud of what Austin has done with others in our union. Uh, and I want to give everybody solidarity, say that the Labour Party, the Labour movement, the unions have to be here for everyone. And until we have a society when everybody is treated, that they have something to offer and are valued in the correct way, we've got a lot of injustice to fight. And I know that Jeremy and John and the unions are committed to that fight. So solidarity to everybody. And thank you so much.